Hi, I'm Sebastian DeCastell. I'm the author of Soulbinder, the fourth book in the Spellslinger series. So Kellen is an initiate uh, in the ways of magic. Among his people, magic is everything. This is the one thing that they believe makes them distinct as a people, the thing that they rely on to keep themselves protected. It's the way that they judge each other as being important or unimportant. And at the beginning of Spellslinger, Kellen is just discovering that he's lost his magic. And so his entire future uh, has basically fallen apart. And so what the series is really about is what do you do in that moment when you really discover that you're not the chosen one. And in Kellen's case, he has to find other ways, tricks and traps and other sort of techniques in order to kind of make his way through the world. Is no a good answer? Is it hell? Every page is blood and murder. It's a steady process of sticking your fingers through a grinder until something comes out the other end and that becomes the ink on which you write the pages. Um, sorry. Um, Spellsinger is a weird mix of incredibly difficult for me to write and incredible fun to write. The, incredible, the incredibly difficult part is constantly putting yourself back through all of the, my kind of most traumatic teenage memories. The first time someone tells you that they want to fight you after school and you have to go to this place where everybody's going to watch you get beat up and um, the moment as the four o'clock bell rings and you start that horrible, horrible walk, knowing that you have no way to win the fight. Um, and so you're taking those kinds of experiences, the things that everybody at some point in their life experiences, whether literally or, or in some other fashion, and then you're kind of translating those into a fantasy world. And so I suppose the fun part is that sometimes you get to kind of reconsider what you might have done differently. So the Spellslinger books are always about that. They're always about a a sort of a fantastical version of things that we all go through um, in our teenage years and then translated into this fantasy world and then an exploration of what's kind of an alternative because the way we always want to win either by being the toughest guy in school or the smartest person those things don't work for Kellen he's always got to find a different path I think the trick with bringing um, a kind of a Wild West feel into a fantasy story or even uh, or science fiction or, or anything else really is to remember that the Wild West isn't simply a sort of a setting. It's not just kind of visual tropes. There's also a certain philosophy that goes along with it. In a sense, Farius Parfax, who's probably my favorite character to write in that series, as much as anything, what she brings is what, what used to be sort of called cowboy philosophy. Uh, into Kellen's life, which is this kind of stoicism um, and this awareness that, that the world doesn't work the way you hope it would work and that um, people aren't always what you expect. Um, and so that's kind of the fun of it. And that's the, that's the big challenge. When you want to bring a Wild West flavor, you have to bring something deeper than the visuals and the settings. You have to bring some of the philosophical questions that arise out of the frontier. Rikus is probably one of my favorite characters to write because Rikus gives you an excuse to do anything you want because first of all he's a squirrel cat so he's a thief and a blackmailer and if you believe his stories a murderer on more than one occasion um, and so he's this very strange animal because he's not very big he's just a two foot tall flying squirrel cat um, but he thinks he's the apex predator of the animal kingdom so he'll always be the first one to jump into the fight and to get Kellen into trouble and to threaten to eat people's eyeballs. And um, yeah, so it's great fun to figure out different human body parts for this squirrel cat to describe eating. The big challenge for me of writing Spellslinger was really finding that voice. The first time I tried to sort of write the first book, I kept writing it with this kind of cynical 40 year old's perspective of what it was like to be 16 instead of actually writing what would it be like if you were in the moment. And th those are the two different ways you can write about teenagers. You can write about them as if um, you're in that moment of what it's like to, to be 16, to be standing next to you know, someone that you've always admired and kind of thought you loved or had a crush on and all of the intensity. Or you can write it with a kind of adult cynicism of, you know, sort of winking at the camera and saying, haha, you know, look how silly it is. And I consciously didn't want to do the latter. I wanted to write it as sincerely as possible. 
Um, and so that was the big challenge because so often adult fantasy has a kind of a natural cynicism to it that, that works quite well. But I think when you're going to write young adult, you have to write it, especially when you're writing first person, you have to write it with a certain sincerity. It's not gullibility. Teenagers aren't gullible. They already know that the world is unfair. But they have a kind of a, a genuine hope a lot of the time that maybe this time they'll find out it's not quite as unfair as they thought it was. I think almost every writer I ever meet has a really varied background. It's funny because all our bios are written as if this kind of it's this odd miracle. Can you believe this author did all of these crazy jobs? But actually almost all of us did and I think that's because writers by nature are in a constant state of searching. Um, and so everything I did helped inform my writing in one way or another. Um, fight choreography was great because what it teaches you is that, um, is that a fight scene in a play, for example, can't just be about the movements of the weapons. You have to be using every movement as part of telling the story of what the characters are experiencing. Um, but be, you know, even things like being a project manager, you know, it teaches you how people envision notions of strategy and tactics. And so when you're thinking about writing a giant battle scene of two armies, for example, um, that's what I had to draw on was going, well, if this was a project and my project was to defeat this other army, how would I go about structuring that? Um, teaching is wonderful because you get to uh, be influenced by the creativity of students. Um, so all of it kind of plays in in one form or another, often in ways that you don't really expect when you're starting out. Thank you.